Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Here we have the best open world games on the Nintendo Switch. These are true open world games where you can explore to your heart's content, usually from the beginning. I've tried to keep as many of those games as possible here and all in 3D too. Let's get right into it and start with the daddy of all open world games. Yes, The Elder Scrolls V. Is anyone sick of hearing about Elder Scrolls yet? I am certainly not. I've owned this bad boy on about three different platforms and when I had the opportunity to play this on the Nintendo Switch handheld, I could not pass up that role playing goodness if you don't know here you play in a first person perspective where you can explore to your heart's content do more or less anything you want to do build a home or battle against an ancient dragon or hell just go for a leisurely walk to see the sights if you like that's the beauty of open world games and probably why i have to now try and stay clear of such games otherwise i end up hidden in my man cave for days and weeks on end with beer and pizza and i mean that sounds like a holiday in my opinion but just don't tell the misses i said that moving on then to number two the witcher 3 yes it was supposed to be impossible to port this behemoth to the nintendo switch cd project red had made an absolute monster of a game and even now it has its own netflix series which i enjoyed by the way the game bought was achieved by saber interactive and holy shit did they do an immense job the game is an open world masterclass you can buy this in the physical form or digital i'll have the amazon links in the description for you you can buy from the uk or usa which really helps the team out if you're going to buy it anyways a great christmas present just saying being able to explore this expansive world on handheld is a beauty to behold probably one of my very favorite ports on the nintendo switch now let's keep those big guns coming with the legend of zelda breath of the wild this game was a slight departure to the usual zelda games that you've come to get used to and well i thought it was more grown up hell this was the very reason james and i started a youtube gaming channel in the first place we were so impressed to me as i said it felt more grown up different from those other zelda games in the series you could explore and adventure here wherever you wanted to go you could that feeling of being able to find shrines complete their puzzles along with climbing towers to open up further parts of the map kept this super interesting all the way through it's a game i still come back to time to time even now and i'm sure that we're all waiting for that sequel Burnout Paradise at number four. Well, you might be thinking, why add this one to the list? But this racer is indeed an open world racing game in that you can drive anywhere on the map, taking part in all sorts of events from races to causing as much damage as possible. For me, it's an incredible game to play. And at 60 frames per second on the Nintendo Switch, which is quite a rarity, I have to say, well, it keeps things nice and smooth. And I just love crashing the cars that is one of my favorite things to do here if you haven't played burnout paradise do yourselves a favor if it does come on a deal pick that one up now the assassin's creed pack well i'm especially probably talking more about black flag is a great game we have very much enjoyed especially due to its open world nature with its setting around the caribbean showing some of those great visuals naval battles and combat we have come to expect from the series you're certainly in for one heck of a treat here so don't pass up on it if you get the chance to get it at number six well where is grand theft auto on the nintendo switch that's what i want to know come on rockstar this would have been perfect for this list but for now we'll have to make do with saints row the third the full package which has you controlling the saints at the heights of their power living the life you have to show for it too there's loads of weapons of destruction from the human cannonball cars hover jets and all sorts of crazy stuff there's even the option to play co-op on the switch and well if you wanted to check out naked skydiving just saying you can do that too next up i wasn't going to leave it there i could have been lazy i guess and put both the saints row games together but that just wouldn't be right saints row re-elected deserves its own spot for being so nuts you are now the president of the usa and of course you must save everyone on the planet there's been an alien invasion and here there are superpowers galore weird and crazy weapons to get rid of the alien horde this is one of the wildest open world games on the nintendo switch and well worth a look at number eight we have red faction gorilla remastered which is set 50 years after the climactic events of the first red faction and here you get to control an insurgent fighter with the newly established red faction movement what got me excited was the destructible environments i don't know about you but there is something climactic about blowing shit up and seeing it destroyed i mean that is as realistic as it gets like in a car game when cars don't suffer damage it's just not the same and when firing a missile into a building if 
nothing happens and there's not that same satisfaction. But here you get that great sensation. There's great combat, true physics-based destruction. Sign me up all day long. Dragon's Dogma is featured quite a few times on our sales list when it's on sale. It's not that often, but when it is, it's one of those games you just need to pick up. Personally, if you love RPGs and open world games combined together, if you love killing monsters and exploring, then Dragon's Dogma from Capcom is definitely one for you. Starlink Battle for Atlas is a game I've very much enjoyed, and if you've not checked it out, I'll review for this one, then please click that button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. When it first came out, you were able to buy this physically by buying the game and a ship with modular weapons and characters. Of course, controlling the R-Wing and Fox McCloud has to be what you go for if you love the Star Fox series, and this game gives you the opportunity to do that and bring those toys to life in a digital world. Of course, you don't need to buy any of the physical stuff if you don't really want to, and you can buy all ships weapons, characters and digital if you prefer. In any case, there is a huge open world to explore and story to uncover, which is all very enjoyable, especially flying around and getting into air battles. What more can we say about Minecraft that hasn't already been said? It's one of the biggest selling games ever. This open world sandbox game has you mining and creating whatever you want, wherever you want, and doing it on the move has never been so fun. With crossplay, so you can play with other friends online, there really is no limit here to your creativity. Yonder is a worthwhile indie. While not the best open world game on this list, it still has a lot of merit in my opinion and deserves your attention. It may be for a younger audience with its more cartoonish style and no violence, but that's also a good thing for many, especially as parents wanting to play these types of games with their children. Then we cannot recommend this enough. Nice visuals, audio, and a decent price too. And number 13, Ashen is a co-op action RPG, which is about a wanderer in search of a place to call home. As you explore Ashen, you will come across other players in this pretty large open world. It's then up to you if you want to fight with others or simply ignore them. If you like your stamina souls genre type combat, then this is going to be for you as you take on the multitude of dangerous creatures and no playthrough should ever be the same which is why I personally love playing these types of games. Number 14, we have Portal Knights. It's another cheaper open world game on the Nintendo Switch where you get to travel between 3D generated sandbox worlds. It has some tactical combat classes such as the Warrior, Ranger and Mage and some nice large boss battles including random events too. You can mine resources and build a home. There's not much not to like and I enjoyed it a lot when I played it on the Switch. So if you've not tried it already, maybe this one is worth a shot for you. Lego City Undercover, who doesn't like Lego? For me, there is something very nostalgic about it, which is probably why it always seems to garner my interest when a new video game comes about. This particular game can easily have you invest over 70 hours with its 20 unique districts to investigate as Chase McCain, a police officer who has been tasked with going undercover to hunt down Rex Fury. You can even play co-op with a friend to explore its metropolis, which is Lego City. Loads of humor here and one that is bound to be enjoyable for the entire family. Dragon Quest Builders 2, if you love RPG adventures set in an open world setting where you get to explore islands and gather and craft, then this will be right up your street. Forget about having a life though, as you'll be deep into designing towns, defending them from monsters and bosses, and unlocking new moves to explore even further into the world through water or on land. There's so many hours you can lose to this, and it's all super enjoyable, another which the whole family can enjoy. I'm including Xenoblade 1 and 2 here. For me, they're not true open world games in that sense, but I think someone once said to me that they're more open zoned games. And while that may be true, I think we can just about get away with putting them in here as there is lots of exploration to be had. And let's face it, these are some of the best gaming experiences one can have on the Nintendo Switch. Rich story, loads of exploration, enormous RPGs, which just beg to be played. Whether you work, study, or whatever it is you do, take a week off and delve deep into these games, because once they grab you, they never let go. Windbound is a survival game which I reviewed recently on the channel and is truly open world in every sense. You get to build your boat and then the sea is your oyster in which you can almost sail wherever you like to scavenge materials as long as your boat is 
strong enough, fight monsters for food, or just chill and watch the sunset. Don't let the visuals fool you here though, this is one tough game to complete and master and will leave many of you frustrated. But get past that and you have a game here which is truly very enjoyable. Ladies and gentlemen, I really enjoyed making this video and if you enjoyed watching, which I hope you did, then please leave us a like, that would be really helpful if you hit that thumbs up button and leave us a comment in the comment section just letting us know what your favourite open world game is and if we've missed any that should have been on this list. We'd really appreciate that and we love reading your comments so please don't be shy. Lastly, if you are a new watcher here then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, we'd love to see you again and I'm going to put some content up above for you which includes our bargains video that goes live every Sunday with your host James where he cuts through all the noise on that eShop to find you the best bargains on the Nintendo Switch. On Monday, Jordan lets you know all the physicals that are going to be released that week and also host that wonderful community spotlight. If you haven't seen it yet then check out our video and then sprinkled in between some wonderful reviews and other features too. So if you want everything Switch, make it Switch Watch. We'll see you again on the next one.